it's either it's all my fault or mm -hmm. it's not my fault or it's all my fault. Yeah. And I see how easily we either go to defensiveness or we go to shame. And it's yeah. like yeah. there's no place else to go. But um, I took another one of my classes uh, to one of these presentations, and um, one of my students just I thought beautifully modeled a third alternative. Um, where she was sharing something and she kind of made a misstep and said something that wasn't totally cool. And people around her kind of pounced on her. And I, I was feeling bad for her, I was feeling kind of protective of her, like, oh God, it's, it's so hard to make a mistake in public and then it's really hard to be corrected in public. But she didn't need my protection. She was just so graceful about this. She just stayed in this place of of like, I'm gonna hear that I'm gonna be here without going to defensiveness or shame, so that I can learn. And at the end of the evening, she just turned to the people around her and said, "Thank you for giving me the space to make a mistake, because mm -hmm. then I can hear where I made a misstep and, and do better next time." <laughs> so I just thought that there was just this incredible like role model for how to do this really hard yes. emotional part of this work. I oh, sat right there. across from her. I was right oh, there. So yes, next there. to a couple that yeah. had a young African American male and a white woman, right? Yeah. Right next to me. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would call courageous, courageous yeah. imperfection. Yes, courageous <laughs> imperfection. <laughs> that was it, right sure there. Once I finally learned, like, oh, here's the thing you don't say. Yeah. Like, oh, here's the thing I know. Right? I know not to say that thing. So, I know. like, how do I not be the person who pounces on somebody for doing the one mistake I know not to make? Right, and yet, <laughs> yes, and we have to call out as well mm -hmm. when so stuff is happening. Right. So, it's it. really complicated. Yeah. Not that I'm a role model or anything, but a very similar thing happened to me. I grew up in Texas from a very racist family. And then I went to the University of Texas and my whole mind, my whole life shifted, everything. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of times, would say really ridiculous things and I had people pounce on me. But I think it was the best thing to happen because I really understood firsthand what not being white was like. And it was the best thing that ever happened. There's, somebody brought this to my attention. There's both a, a need to call people into the conversation, right? We need to invite people into the conversation. But we, there's a calling out, too. And so and so I've, I've heard people say, well, we don't want to call people out. We want to call them in. But it really both needs to happen, right? Yeah. Um, I went to the, the, the other night. There was the Buddhist approach to whiteness, letting go of blame and shame. It's really wonderful. I thought it was great. Yeah. But one of the things that one of the moderators said that stuck with me is that um, you will catch yourself having racist thoughts or, or saying something that comes out sounding racist because it's in the air we breathe, it's part of the fabric of our society, but to have an open loving heart even toward yourself too, to acknowledge, notice that it's happened and then be able to correct yourself but in a loving way and not in a way that's like getting down on yourself because this is part of the work, it's just recognizing as those, those natural thoughts occur. That was important for me yeah. to hear. And just one real yeah. um, I Probably some of you have been to race talk in Kennedy School. One of the things that I love about that is there's one of the rules that they have for like discussion is to assume good intentions on the other person's part. That's right. And like, we just so we don't do that so well. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to say one thing too because as we were getting ready, like a, an analogy occurred to me oh, yes. in terms of this, which may be useful, maybe not. You tell me. Um, of of, and I came from looking at this model of like, kind of comparing this uh, to dealing with addiction, and that when we first realize there's a problem, it's 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 not very obvious. But then as we try and work against it, it's really uncomfortable, and then we have to, if we're serious about it, like completely go through this this really awkward, uncomfortable thing of saying. I'm not going to do that now. And then you start realizing all of the impacts of making that decision, because life will hit you with all of the impacts of making that decision. 
Um, and also, you can backslide. You know, it, it was in talking about reintegration of like, you know, you separate yourself out if you're a drug user, separate yourself out from that crowd that does that, and then all of a sudden later you end up like popping in and hanging out with them, and you start to realize like, man, wow, it was like in the year I breathed. You know, it was like in everything I did. So it's, I, I kind of feel like there's there's a similar process in going through this Helms model of like of like, oh, I had privilege, and, you know, I do have privilege, and, like, and these things did happen, and, like, it's, it wasn't a problem for me, but it was a problem for a lot of other people, and now, like, having to acknowledge that is, is uncomfortable, and also, uh, I don't want to feel bad. Nobody wants to feel bad. That's the thing. So... But people feel bad. People feel really bad to experience racism. So yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Maybe we can feel we a little bit bad. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. 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 And that's... That's why we have to do something. Right. But I think that's that's something that should also come into the conversation. That if when we call people out, we don't follow up with a little bit of why. You know? Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to... Move us forward. I just ran right over this task for whites. I think you know that, but the task for whites in the last state slide was, you know, moving from an, an understanding of an individual idea of prejudice, and I, which you all know. And if you're attending whiteness history months events, <laughs> you know that. Uh, and the other one was, what was the other one? Uh, not being, um, um, Recognize. yeah, recognizing institutional and cultural racism, right? Mm -hmm. And a, a positive white identity not based on assumed superiority, which a lot of whites don't think they have, right? They don't think they have that. So that's the, the nut that we're trying to crack in all this work. Okay, so I just want to, we want to leave you with D'Angelo's concept of stamina, that essentially with so much fragility, we don't have the stamina to engage in these conversations, which is why people shut them down, they cry, they run away, they're incredibly silent, or they're... Uh, even um, blogging uh, negatively about such things as whiteness. So, um, you know, this is all about uh, a lack of stamina that we have to engage in this conversation in an honest way uh, and in a courageous way. So, there's a huge need for stamina, and because we because we don't, you know, we're going to continue to to perpetuate right this the same kind of racism that we live with have lived with. Right? Uh, anything you want to add? Uh, other than, you know, it's, uh, it's very hopeful to see people coming to these. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's good to, that we've got kind of a show of solidarity and things like that. And I would say, you know, just communicate out your experiences about this month to the people that you bump into. Because I, I know I was at a dinner party this weekend where somebody was working at Intel, was like, I'm really offended by that event. And I was like, well, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And she just emailed me and we're going to talk about that. So I, I think, you know, like I said before, the feeling is the entree of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's my thoughts. Thank you so much for coming today. And uh, we, oh, if you are a part timer, uh, you want to check in with Sandy because she has a form for you to to sign, and uh, for the rest of you, you can fill out your evaluation and leave them maybe on this table there, up here. Uh, and if anyone would like a copy of Robin D'Angelo's work, I would be happy to get that from you. The article that you mentioned, uh, Why White People Freak Out, yeah. when you bring up race, is, is in the library repository, repository of whiteness mm -hmm. history. Yeah, so oh, we should have mentioned, yeah. uh, if you haven't looked at the repository yeah. for Whiteness History Month, you're really missing out. It is chock full of resources for you. Where do you find that? Uh, it's on the website, so
is an option for you. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 